iOS 11 is finally here. Well, the beta, at least. Now, I've done a video on how to install the beta without being a registered developer, in case you want to see that. The link for that is in the description. But now, I also wanted to do a top features video. And iOS 11 comes with hundreds of new features, but I wanted to focus on the biggest features, or at least the ones that I believe to be the biggest ones, the most important ones. Oh, and there's a ton of new features on the iPad as well. The iPad interface has been completely redesigned in iOS 11, but in this video, I'll only be focusing on non-iPad devices, so on the iPhone and the iPod Touch. So yeah, there we go. 35 plus features, biggest features in iOS 11. Grab some popcorn and uh, enjoy. So number one, this is actually one of my favorite features of iOS 11, if not uh, the best feature in my opinion. So if you have AirPods, previously you could control them uh, by double tapping on them and Siri would come up and you would be able to say play next song, previous song, pause and so on. But now you finally have individual controls for each AirPod. So if you go to settings and if you go to Bluetooth, you simply have to tap that eye icon and now you have the option to select what double tap action you want for each AirPod. So I configured my left AirPod uh, for play pause and the right one for next track. Of course that I can always go back to Siri and use Siri, but sometimes you prefer uh, being quiet when going to the next song and so on. At number two, FaceTime seems much more fluid now. So if you look at the image in the top corner, uh, it feels it feels really, really fluid, definitely not 30 frames per second. So I don't think it's 60, but definitely something like 40 or maybe even 50. Feels so much more fluid than uh, in iOS 10. Next up, number three, this is something that I've been waiting for such a long time and we finally have it. So this is also one of the biggest changes in iOS 11. So the control center has been completely redesigned. So no longer have multiple pages. Everything is in just this one single page. And it's not just that, but we have so many more control options than before. You have this really nice transparent look, which looks so much better uh, than the previous control center. Next up, Siri also got a brand new voice. So this is for both male and female. And this is how she sounds. So now she sounds much more human-like. Tell me a joke. What did one iPhone say to the other iPhone? I used to know this one. I don't think you'd understand a joke in my language. They're not so funny anyway. Then you also have the option to type to Siri now. So if you go to accessibility, options, and then Siri, you now have this toggle here, type to Siri. And now when I enable Siri, I have the option to say whatever I want just Hello. by typing. This is useful when you cannot really speak and you still want to use Siri. Another really cool feature is that you can finally read the QR codes with the iPhone in the native camera app. So this wasn't possible. This was a really requested feature before. So simply open up the camera app. And as you can see, I have a QR code and it doesn't take me to that web page. Instead, it gives me the option to go to that web page if I wish. So I can still take a photo of the QR code. Finally, you don't have to use those third party QR code scanners anymore. Next up, you can now send money with Apple Pay in iMessages to your contacts. So choose a contact, choose the Apple Pay app from the iMessages apps, enter the amount and they will be, they will receive this uh, Apple Pay card. So they can use this to make Apple Pay purchases or they can simply send this money to their bank accounts. And portrait mode on the iPhone actually got some pretty big improvements. So it finally supports HDR. Low light has been improved and now you can also use the dual tone flash uh, in, in portrait mode and so much more. Next up, the lock screen and the notification center have been unified. So this is this is a bit strange. So if you slide uh, from the top to the bottom and then you have to slide up, so this is the lock screen and then if you slide up, you get to uh, the notification center. Now, this doesn't actually lock the phone, but it's just one extra step that you have to do. See, the phone wasn't locked. And then you can always access the widgets panel by simply swiping to the right whenever you wish. Oh, and by the way, if you want to have the notification panel showing all the time when you swipe down, uh, just open the notification center up. And then when you open it again, it will automatically open the notification center, not the lock screen. And finally, you now have the ability to loop live photos. So you can have a live photo play basically forever. Another big change is the App Store itself. So the App Store has been completely redesigned, including the icon. So this is the new App Store and you now have a couple of different tabs here. So the first one is today. So this one shows you a couple of apps that are being selected uh, every single day. So these are the top apps, the top games and so on. These actually change um, 
two different ones every single day. And you also have the games tab, same thing, but for games, these are a couple of games that are highlighted. So it's mostly a much cleaner interface. Now, if you want to go to uh, the previous view in which you can see uh, all top paid games and so on, you can still do that. So you still have this list view if you wish. And same goes for the apps. You have a couple of featured apps here and you also have a couple of trailers for some apps, which by the way, auto play now. The sound is not enabled, but all these videos now autoplay. And Maps has also gotten a couple of pretty interesting improvements. So we now have Lane Guidance, uh, which was a really requested feature previously. So Lane Guidance, you can also see the speed limit now. And Maps also supports indoor views now. At the moment, this works in a few malls and also a few airports. Next up, this is a pretty big one. So Apple Music Kit is now open to developers. So uh, they can actually take full use of the full library of Apple Music. So for example, in Shazam, you'll now be able to add your discovered songs directly to Apple Music without having to go back and forth uh, from Shazam to Apple Music. And another major feature in iOS 11 is do not disturb mode while driving. So now the iPhone can automatically detect when you're in your car and driving based on uh, the input for from the accelerometer, the gyroscope, the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and so on. So when you're driving, it will automatically enable this DND while driving mode. So all notifications will be silenced, the display will be off so that you can focus on your driving. I'm guessing that when you get a call, that would still be forwarded to the car speaker. And autocorrection while typing in multiple languages has finally been improved. It doesn't really work that well in all languages, and unfortunately it only works actually in languages that support uh, quick type. So for example, English does support it, Romanian and many others uh, don't. But for those that do, you'd actually get suggestions. So if you're typing in English and you type a French word, you would actually get a suggestion in English for that French word so that you don't have to switch keyboards uh, that much. Now, going back to the control center, it now supports 3D touch, but now 3D touch is even smarter, so to say, than before. So you have much more functionality. So for example, if you want to enable night shift, there is no actual button to enable night shift. So you just 3D touch on the brightness and that's night shift. And you also have these folders, so to say. So this is for the uh, connectivity. So Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and uh, cellular and airplane mode. If you want to see more options, simply 3D touch on this folder, so to say, and you can see more options such as airdrop, personal hotspot, and so on. And same goes for the music controls. So if you want to change, let's say the audio output source, you can also change. I don't have anything playing right now, but here you would be able to change the audio output source. So there you go. Just to give you an idea, if I three touch on this, I now, I now have the option to change the source if I had AirPods or uh, an Apple TV. And also when it comes to the control center, it's fully customizable now. So if you go to settings and if you go to uh, control center, you now have the option to add all of those extra options. So you can add a stopwatch, you can add a screen recording, by the way, which you can also do in iOS 11, uh, guided access, Apple TV remote, and so many more. And now if I open up control center, I have all of those options that I selected before. I have all of those here. Now, from what I've seen, you cannot actually rearrange uh, the toggles in the control center. You have to go to settings and rearrange them from here, which is a tiny bit weird. So I'm guessing that they will be adding some sort of rearrangement option uh, by the end of all the beta. And iOS 11 also introduces something really cool, and that's AR Kit. So developers can now take full advantage of all the sensors on the iPhone gyroscope accelerometer, uh, and both of the cameras on the iPhone 7 Plus, and they can make an app with amazing tracking when it comes to AR. This wasn't possible before, at least not on this precision level. Imagine how awesome this would be on the iPhone 8. Since the iPhone 8 is going to be heavily focused on AR. Then also in live photos, you now have the option, besides looping, you also have the option to create a long exposure. So this is useful for when you take, uh, let's say, shots of something that's flowing, like water, river, or something. This also works really well at night, by the way, if you want to create that long exposure light trails. Then the iMessages dock has also been redesigned. So now it looks much nicer and it's much easier to access your apps uh, than before. Then also with iOS 11, Siri can now translate. So she can translate from uh, English to Spanish, Chinese, uh, French, Italian, and I believe that's it for now. How do you say good morning in Chinese? How do you say enjoy the video in Spanish? Disfruta del video. And Siri also knows what kind of music you like based on what kind of music you've been listening to. So you can say, play something I like. Now shuffling your favorites mix. And now the music started playing, so it works. And when you're playing the song, Siri now knows a couple of really useful details about the song, such as you can ask her, hey Siri, who's the drummer in the song? 
Veggie Tales, The Little Drummer Boy, 50 Ways to Leave Your Drummer. Wait, what? There are 16 more, if you'd like them. Okay, so apparently you have to give her a song to listen to. And QuickTime is even smarter now, not just for languages, but you can also type, you can also tell a friend that you're on your way, and Siri will suggest to you, uh, will show you the time in which you'll actually be there, so pretty useful. And iOS 11 also supports AirPlay 2.0, so I don't actually have this on mine because I don't have any wireless speakers, but you can actually send different music to different speakers at the same time, and you can assign rooms to them, so it's much, much better than, than the previous one in which you had to send music to one speaker in a single room. And then if you wanted a second speaker, you have to, you have to pause the music and send it to the second one. So finally, multi-audio playback to wireless speakers in iOS 11. And yeah, just as I mentioned before, you now have the option to record uh, the screen. So if you press the recording button, which you have to enable for the control center in the settings, now the screen is being recorded. And this is awesome. There was no official iOS app to record a screen. You could connect it to a Mac and record a screen via, via QuickTime, but there wasn't anything official on iOS. You actually had to jailbreak your phone or, or use a, a third-party apps, most of which got removed pretty quickly, but we finally have something official from Apple. Now here in photos, I can see my, my entire recording. So pretty cool. Now when it comes to the keyboard, besides the quick type improvements, which I've already talked about, there is something really cool. So if you hold the language button, you now have the option to select what keyboard orientation position you, you wish. So for example, now the keyboard is smaller. So I finally have a one handed keyboard uh, for when, for example, I'm traveling. This is really useful on the plus models because it's really difficult to type with one hand. And now when you press the arrow key, it goes back to uh, the regular size. And there's a new feature for when you set up your iPhone for the first time. So automatic setup. So if you hold your iPhone next to an iPhone that you already have and it's unlocked, you can transfer your data much faster to what's basically a peer-to-peer Wi-Fi connection. So iCloud keychain, password, settings. I'm guessing that apps and full iCloud data will still have to be downloaded directly from Apple servers, but everything else would be transferable. Then even though this is not an actual iOS 11 feature, this was introduced with iOS 11 and it's a pretty big one. So if you had a the one terabyte iCloud storage plan, it, that is now, it has now been upgraded to two terabytes for the same price. And it's not even that, but you can also share iCloud storage with your entire family. So you can have the two terabytes plan and split it between uh, up to five members. Now with iOS 10.3, Apple introduced something really unique and that's the APFS or the Apple proprietary file system. That's a file system that's been optimized uh, for flash storage and for encryption. It's coming to the Mac and Mac OS High Sierra 10.13. And now iOS 11 is a full 64-bit operating system. So yes, it doesn't work on 32-bit devices. iPhone 5S, the iPad Air 1, these are the last uh, devices to support iOS 11. So Apple A7 chip and newer. So 32-bit apps are not supported anymore. So developers will have to update them to a 64-bit support. And iMessage also comes with a couple of new effects. So this is the first one, Echo. And we also have this one, Spotlight. And in settings, we have emergency mode. Emergency SOS is back on the iPhone again. So I believe this was introduced in a beta version of iOS 10, but then it was removed. We still have it on the Apple Watch, but not on uh, not on the iPhone. So here you can have auto calls, so call emergency services by sliding the emergency SOS control that appears after you rapidly click the sleep away button five times. Then you also have a couple of emergency contacts that you can add. And also a couple of smaller changes that I consider to be pretty important. So in settings, if you go to general, you now have the option to shut down your iPhone. So this is really useful for when your power button dies and you wanna reset your iPhone. Uh, really, really useful to have this. And then there's also an option here for the iPhone storage. So now you have the option to delete certain apps that you haven't used in a while. Same goes for messages, messages in the iCloud. So more options to clean up your iPhone and uh, make more free space. So there you go, 35 plus new features in iOS 11. Let me know in the comments which one were your top five or top three features in iOS 11. I think for me, that would be AirPods, uh, then probably a new control center, and then number three, probably the emergency mode. I think that's really useful to have on an iPhone. Yeah, if you're subscribed, if you wanna see more iOS 11 related videos, and also don't forget to enable notifications on my channel by simply clicking on that bell icon so that you're notified whenever I upload a brand new epic video. But yeah, this has been pretty much it for now. So yeah, thank you all for watching until the end. Feel free to give this video a like if you have enjoyed it to let me know. I'm Daniel and I'll see you guys in my next one. Also let me know in the comments if you're epic enough to make it until the end by saying I was epic enough to make, to make it until the end. But yeah, I'm Daniel and I'll see you guys in my next one. So enough tech, signing out. Cheers.